What's up, duelists? Now, I get access to some very advanced analytics on YouTube, and it tells me exactly what decks you guys search for the most, basically. Everyone who shows up on my channel, I get to see what decks you're looking up on YouTube. And this is actually one of the most searched decks on YouTube, is Christius Warren. Now, of course, Mumix had a list last year at RBT Rulers that I think was very heavily metagamed for that metagame. I think that list is incredibly dated now. I think it doesn't really fit exactly what's happening in the metagame. It doesn't have a great Vayu matchup. I actually don't think it has that good of a Blackwing matchup. Uh, it has some issues, some holes that are pretty exploitable weaknesses. And it really had success, I think, in that tournament because nobody knew what it did. And nobody knew what was in the list and what wasn't in the list. So they were like siding all crazy and they were doing all crazy stuff. But I think that list has become a bit dated since people have kind of figured it out and learned what's happened. I've applied a lot of different stuff in this list that I've learned from not only playing that list, but a bunch of other decks as well. The concept behind this is instead of Mumix list using Soul of Purity and Light to control the graveyard, we're going to be using Pot of Avarice here. We're also not going to be playing Judgment Dragon as a payoff card. It's going to be solely Archlord, Christia, Pot of Avarice. Those are going to be the only payoff cards. I think this is much more resilient, much stronger. I noticed in the games that I was playing um, the other list, the list with Judgment Dragons, that Judgment Dragon was win more, like 99% of the time. It very rarely impacted the board in a meaningful way. Oftentimes it was running into Royal Oppression, making me weaker to that. It was running into Starlight Road, making me weaker to that when I really didn't need to be. Uh, it was just causing complications for the deck in terms of like breaking, drawing awkwardly. Now Pot of Avarice can break as well, but Pot of Avarice offers us that like mid to late game gas that allows us to play through things like royal oppression that allows us to play through things like you know just a really serious grind game and one of the issues the other deck had was like once you get to the late game when you have like nine or ten fairies in your graveyard there even one soul of purity and light's not going to be able to control that this deck can go into the late game over and over and over again thanks to both dimensional alchemist and pot of avarice so you can play the longer game unlike the the other fairy decks did but you also have that more consistent early game thanks to alchemist and that more consistent game into royal oppression the sideboard is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's one mistake with this sideboard, but this is the list I played today. There should be a Space Typhoon over one of these Dust Tornadoes. That is a mistake. Uh, that is an error. You should definitely have a Space Typhoon here over a Dust Tornado. But other than that, like the sideboard is exactly what, what I was thinking. The Transmigration Prophecy is an interesting tech. I've been trying it out in these like insanely grindy decks because it's a way to shuffle back your avarices. So now in the Avarice Mirrors, I not only have three avarices but i have five and so i'm gonna win those like really grindy avarice mirrors basically uh herald of purple and the herald of purple light is for deck devastation virus it's also for light mirror it's also for uh the other cards that shut off this deck that make it very difficult to play the tech cards in the main the two dd crows and the junk synchron they help fuel pot of avarice junk synchron's a road to target it just is a really strong normal summon in the mid to late game either it gets you an android or a catastrophe or a junk junk warrior or something like that or it can help you control the graveyard. You could bring a Herald out of the graveyard. You can go for double Synchro plays. Like, let's say I have Hamster Ryko in play. I can go for Junk Synchron plus Herald, and then go for a double Synchro. I can go for Arm plus, like, I don't know, Black Rose, and that's that's pretty good. It's not, like, insane by any means, but it's pretty good. I think this card gives the deck a lot of control, and I think it's a strong card to include in the list. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff I want to talk about with this deck. Arcus, Eren, their applications, the one Celestia... But I think the matches will sort of speak for themselves. I'm actually, I, I'm not going to any tournaments soon, but I feel like um, this is actually the list that I would take to a tournament if I was going to a tournament soon. That's how like confident I am in this deck list. I actually think it's really, really good. So let's go ahead and hop into the replay. So if I was going to a tournament, I would not be leaking this. <laughs> but I've been, I've been working on it for a while. This is the first replay. This is against Fan2112. One, uh, we win the rock paper scissors which is pretty important in any light sworn deck winning the rock paper scissors is pretty important but this deck actually does a pretty good job of going second thanks to having access to arcus arcus can attack into d prison it can attack over Ryko. it dodges bottomless it's just a really good card you'll see you'll see the work it puts in in this match it, it's honestly one of the most slept on cards in the metagame right now it's like one of the best going second cards, one of the best openers. It goes into almost everything. The defensive stats are really nice. It protects you from Crow. It protects you from a lot of... It's just really good. Anyway, we recharge away the Arcus because we do have Call. We would have thought about maybe not doing it um, if we didn't have Call, but because we do have Call, which is a god card in this deck, we can do it. And our hand just looks like really good. We have Herald plus the Fairies. 
we have Dimensional Alchemist, we have DD Crow, and we have Call. So this is like a perfect hand. And we have a little bit of a grave setup. You know, we have a couple Light Sworns. Not that that really matters, but having three monsters is pretty good for Avarice. The Alchemist hits, which is really nice. We hit Hamster, and then we go ahead and set Call. One thing that's really nice about this deck is it is 27 monsters. So you're very likely to hit with Alchemist. You're not 100% to hit with it. It's not like playing it in Monster Master or anything, but you're very, very likely. The more I play Edison format, the more and more I'm impressed with Dimensional Alchemist as a card. I feel like it's one of the best cards in the format that is at three, legitimately. It's really, really strong. We're going to end phase call, bring out the Arcus to play around Torrential Tribute. The reason we're doing this is because I do want to Celestia the opponent. Uh, in hindsight, what I should have done actually was Dimensional Alchemist activate and then chain call on Arcus. Uh, to see if the opponent like messed up and tried to torrential us but that's an angle shoot and i don't feel like doing that so yeah alchemist activates misses banishes avarice but we already hit so it doesn't really matter we're gonna sack for celestia the opponent thinks for a while here uh he goes he goes ahead and lets this go through letting not solemning it basically which is interesting it's i'm not sure if it's correct or wrong i feel like you should solemn it because like then what i have alchemist to your hamster I'll be forced to herald the hamster. Yes, you'll be at 4,000, but I don't know. I don't know if that's... I, I think he should have solemned the Celestia, but that's just me. I think he should have solemned it. Definitely definitely a mistake. We would have we would have played a different game had that happened because we would have, from there, probably summoned the alchemist, attacked into the hamster, and then we would have had to route our decision based off of our knowledge. Like, we could just keep Crow, keep the Herald up, not really worry about it, let our Alchemist die uh, to the Ryko, and then have our other one in play to float into Hamster when we eventually go into it. Or we could Herald the Hamster and just beat him to death with the two-dimensional Alchemists. There was a couple different ways we could have approached it. So it definitely wasn't, like, a winning position for the opponent had he solemn the Celestia, plus he would have been really low on life total. But I, I think it's it would have been a better position for him than this. He goes for card trooper mill three let's see his hand let's see why he decided to do that maybe he thought he would i don't fucking know why he thought he didn't want to do that he goes for card trooper mill attack over the alchemist we're going to take 600 and add back the hamster but we have game basically here on board we just summon the herald of orange light synchro into ancient sacred wyvern and this is a 5600 ancient sacred wyvern and that's lethal over the card trooper so yeah i he definitely should have solemn the celestia here but I don't know maybe he thought like maybe he thought my deck couldn't do something like this maybe he thought that this this was not a possibility i could also summon the christia here too we made it to four fairies so pretty nuts stuff the deck just flows really well that's one game that's one game all right that's one game opponent kind of made a mistake kind of made an error but we'll see how it does in game two right opponent's going to have the cyborg cards they're going to have deck devs they're going to have light mirrors and whatnot so this hand's really good we've got card trooper we've got storm so more options or not options but more opportunities to draw heavy storm when you have it in the main there's just more games you're going to draw it so that's how it works he sets a monster and passes and this is the strength of arcus you can just summon it and attack into rikos and they can't target it they only get a mill three so it's just i'll take my free plus one and then phase i get a mill two which is busted and now look at the situation right i have i have arcus plus honest what can he do like, literally, what can he do? He can't Bryonic to out the Arcus. He can't Brain Control the Arcus. He can't Dark End to out the Arcus. He can't Dark Armed to out the Arcus. He can't attack over the Arcus. So what can he do? Like, what? literally, what can he do? I'm gonna get another turn here. Like, there's just nothing he can do to get rid of this Arcus. There's only one out that that deck maybe plays, which is Lightning Vortex. And that's it. Otherwise, Arcus Honest is like a completely, like, solid position versus value turbo which is one of the most play one of the most played decks right now i think it's like the third or fourth most played decks right now and arcus also has a lot of applications for other decks as well but uh this is pretty crazy position to have versus uh what a lot of a deck that a lot of people are playing i think so yeah summons armageddon knight and again like we're just guaranteed to get another turn here he could use the value effect now but we have dd crow so it doesn't really matter he attacks into the arcus we use the honest he loses his Armageddon Knight. He sets a back row passes. We draw Solar Recharge. It's kind of dead here, but whatever. I'm going to Heavy Storm because, once again, the only way he can out this is Mirror Force. And that's what was set, right? I'm going to summon Card Trooper, Mill 3. Hope to get closer to four fairies. Unfortunately, we don't. We're still at two fairies, but we are going to get two more mills in the end phase. So we hit for 12, and then we hit for 19. I'm not really worried about Gores. If he has Gores, like, that's fine. 
and phase we mill two more and we mill two more spells which sucks but that's just like how this deck works like, that's how light torn works in general like you know sometimes you just mill bad he banishes caius he activates the Vayu. we chain dd crow so this is a little bit scary because he could have dark armed but even dark armed here can't clear the arcus and can't really like beat us and now because he's probably scared of honest he has to attack the card trooper can't attack the arcus so he attacks the card trooper we're gonna get a draw we get a draw into gores which is just amazing and face he mills three i think it's a little bit of a mistake for him to have lila in post board versus our deck but last game he did lose to call of the haunted i think is that last game yeah it was so it makes sense that he would have the lila by the way the way i sided in this matchup i sided in the i sided in one royal decree over torrential i sided out solemn judgment for herald of purple light and then i sided in the third dd crow i believe over Aaron, maybe? I, I think I cited those three cards. I think I just cited one Royal Decree. I wanted to see what he was about. One Royal Decree, one Herald of Purple, and one DD Crow are the three cards I cited in. If he was on like heavy handed, like light mirrors and stuff, then I would have brought in other Royal Decree and the Dust Tornado's going uh, for game three. But if he's not on that, let's say he's on the Matt K build, which only has one deck devastation virus for decks like fairies then i'm only gonna side the one herald and the one decree and like go with that anyway we pick up dd warrior lady a little bit awkward but also not the end of the world uh because you know what what can he do to this arcus what can he do to it if i just switch it to defense right i can't summon the dd warrior lady and swing into this because he has necrogard now so he'll just negate that attack and that's a that's not good obviously so i'm just gonna switch the arcus to defense and it's like what do you do you can't sack for kaya's you can't brain control you can't run it over like eventually i'm gonna get to four fairies and i'm just gonna beat you with christia he does have card trooper which is like the one card he can make to attack over it here obviously he could go for like uh plague plus greffer but that would cost him multiple cards in order to do that sort of thing he attacks over the arcus and then he plays into gores and i was like oh, shit i fucking win you know what i mean obviously he's not gonna predict gores but that's just the way this goes we draw avarice which is nice we have three fairies so i figured fuck it let's avarice leave all three fairies so we do that and then we end up finding i believe herald of orange light yep so that means we have game because herald can negate necro gardener and then um alchemist is lethal i think dd warrior lady was also lethal let me do the math real quick 1000 over lila 13 over there so that's 2300 yep and then dd warrior lady direct is lethal and we had herald, herald of orange light to beat necrogarna so the way this deck works is you just establish a really annoying miller christia is inevitable pot of avarice is inevitable and everything they need to do to get over your annoying miller gets stopped by dd crow and it gets stopped by herald of orange gets stopped by all your hand traps so it's like a really annoying deck to play against because you're just running into hand traps over and over and over again and then eventually a Christie is coming down and you're just shut out from playing the rest of the game. So you're forced to play a grind game. There's no heavy storm for hand traps, right? And then eventually, like, the Pot of Avarice is just going to be live because you've had to play into all these hand traps. And then eventually a Christie is going to come down. And it's just, most decks just can't answer that kind of thing, you know? Most decks can't deal with it. And even in this circumstance, like, this game you saw, like, we were never at danger of losing to Oppression. We were barely at danger of running into a Light Mirror or a Deck Dev, you know? Like, so it's just... It's just a very resilient way to play this strategy, I feel, to play the Avarices and to play the uh, other cards as well. All right, next replay. Next replay to show off this deck a bit more. We go first again, which is really nice, obviously, in the Light Sworn decks. You know how it goes. Uh, I'm going to solar recharge. Hold up, i got to answer this message. Uh, hold up, 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 hold up. Hold everybody hold okay yeah solar recharge pitch Aaron it looks like I did leave in the Aaron I must have sighted out a, a hamster or something going second that's probably what it was we solar recharge oh no sorry this is a different match this is a different match I don't know why I'm thinking I went to game three obviously I never go to I just always win 2-0 just kidding Kappa I lost so many matches today while I was playing not this deck this deck is busted but I, I lost matches playing fucking Pac-Man stupid ass deck all right I set hamster set dust shoot Another thing about this deck is you get to open dust shoot, which is nice. And we get to see the opponent's hand. He has an interesting hand. He has a pointer of the red lotus. I find out later that he doesn't know what this card does because he, you'll see, you'll see. We dust shoot. We take the black salvo. 
and I'm like telling him to return the salvo and I'm like return the salvo return the salvo and he finally does um yeah he goes grab for pitch Mally send plague Mally activate and we just have crow for plague and like I said like if your opponent wants to play into this hamster he's gonna have to do something you know what I mean like very few cards are a normal summon take value over hamster there's literally just drago and flamvel fire dog and that's it otherwise everything else normal summon alone it's not good enough to beat hamster you have to play into dd crow somehow to get an advantage versus a turn one set hamster so yeah they go uh mally stack for plague we crow the plague game one plagues they're just busted attack into the hamster we grab Ryko, and now it doesn't even matter what he does shoots here or a pointers here because like we're just beating his whole board with just this he goes does shoot take christia obviously it's the best card in our deck and then he goes a pointer pay 2000 uh take the gores and here he thinks he feel i feel like he thinks um a pointer leaves it banished because what happens is i flip Ryko, i pop the dark refer i mill three i mill three fairies which is pretty nice puts us to four fairies we don't draw i don't think we draw christia I attack over the malicious. I attack directly for 200 and I set the next Ryko. The reason I set the next Ryko is I don't really want to mill more because I'm already at four fairies. And I know his top deck is Gores from the dust shoot. And then end phase, I add back the Gores. And then here he like looks at his graveyard for a little while. And I can tell he's reading a pointer of the Red Lotus. And he's like, oh, and tell your opponent's next end phase. Yeah, imagine this was just dust shoot, but it banished permanently. That's like ridiculous anyway um he just passes the turn here what i should have done was summon the arcus and attack with nimble and raiko but uh yeah it, i just attacked with the raiko set the arcus i wanted to get lucky in top deck christia but in hindsight i should have done it this way i top deck celestia which is nice celestia is really good in this deck we can just attack with everything if he drops scores we just celestia blow it up and then we have arcus celestia defending us from like brain control and we have raiko defending us from whatever else back row he draws unless it's torrential and even if it is torrential, then we have like Lila follow up and stuff. He draws and then concedes. Next game, of course. We're going second. I've got DD Crow still in. I mean, this card's just fantastic in the strategy because a lot of the ways other decks will try and deal with you is like Mizuki into like Revive King, or they'll do like, you know, Mali Plague, or they'll do Treeborn Caius, or they'll do Miracle Fusion. And that's a way they'll try to like you know deal with your your high value monsters you know your hamsters your rikos and if they can't access their graveyard they have to play into dd crow to access their graveyard then uh you do a pretty good job of of taking on those decks debris dandy that sort of thing they're going to trap dust shoot us turn one and this is actually a really tough situation for them because like even though they have like their hand is pretty crazy here i'm not going to lie uh we'll get into that in a second they dust shoot take the hamster i set Ryko. He draws Armageddon Knight and he sends Salvo, which basically tells me he for sure, or not Salvo, sends Dequeji, basically tells me he for sure has Salvo, but what he should have done was probably take the DD Crow because he has Salvo in his hand, right? And the only way he's winning this game is by resolving Black Salvo here. So yeah, you got to do this. Raiko pops the Armageddon Knight and this is why Junk Synchron is nice too. He just gives us a one card Synchro, one card Threat, Android, gain us life points, back it up with Honest, like... It's just a good card. It's a high quality card to have in this deck. It's something that lets you establish a board from nothing, which is pretty rare in these Lightsworn type decks until you have the names, right? So he goes Gear Freed, Smoke Grenade, whatever. I chain the Crow because I'm pretty certain he has Salvo. And even if he doesn't, I want to get that to Koichi Banish. He hits my Christia, which is fine. I top deck Avarice like a Lucker, but we would probably win this game regardless. We go ahead and Avarice back five monsters. And that's the power of the hand traps is that they fuel your grave as well like the herald and the um the dd crows and whatever just make sure your your grave is stocked even if he hadn't discarded our christia there thanks to our hand traps our stuff would have been live so yeah solar recharge draw two mill two normal summon nothing we just attack with android don't want to play into gores set hamster that's why i wanted to set hamster this turn you don't set call of the haunted here because if he has a way to get to koichi in the graveyard and normal summon salvo uh, then you don't want your Call of the Haunted to get blown up. We don't really have a great target for it yet. So there's no reason to commit it to the board when he has a deck that can so easily make Black Rose Dragon. And as you can see here, he goes for DDR Pitching Anti, Special Out the Dekoichi, Black Rose Dragon, uh, Blow Up the Field. And we take that. I mean, that's a 3 for 2 trade for us. And we've got Arcus for our follow-up. I'm going to go Heavy Storm in case it's Torrential. Summon Arcus, attack for 1,200. And look at this position. Yet again, Arcus plus Honest. This is incredibly stable, 
very few cards can get over Arcus plus Honest. Like very, very few. And yeah, the opponent just isn't going to be able to do it. Set Call of the Haunted and Phase Mill Christia. Call of the Haunted is now goaded. Uh, he's already used his Black Rose. Summon the Armageddon Knight. Send Malicious. Attack the Arcus. You can't do anything. I have Honest. I have Arcus Honest. It's the best, it's the best setup. And then call the haunted for Christia for game. And that's that. So yeah, I think this deck is legit. I think Christia Sworn is legit. I think this build specifically is really, really strong and resilient. It does a great job of playing into just about everything. DD Crows in the main are nice. They help fuel Avarice. Avarice in the main is nice. It helps you go kind of infinite on resources. And then, you know, Christia itself is like a is a one card infinite. Definitely check out this deck. Try it out. Let me know what you think. Like I said in the beginning. If I was going to a tournament anytime soon to play, this is the deck I would play. That's how confident I am that this is like a solid list. I think it does well versus all of the meta decks right now. In any case, uh, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.